Hi, Annalise and Johan. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. It is an absolute pleasure to have you guys all the way from sunny Brisbane, although I believe it's a little bit chilly now with the winter. How's the weather been going? Is it, is it okay? Is it like South African winter to you or how do you feel about the, the Brisbane weather? We absolutely love the Brisbane weather, Sharmini. Hello, it's lovely to talk to you too. Um, at the moment in Brisbane, the best I can compare it with is like uh, Durban weather. Um, it's lovely and sunny, doesn't ever get too cold, although I think we had our one week of winter last week. We definitely never get frost. Um, so we just love Brisbane because of the short winters. <laughs> the, the one week winter. The one week. And um, as someone previously mentioned, that's the week to take out and get out the scarf and the hat and the jacket and the, <laughs> my favourite, the boots. <laughs> <laughs> and Joanne, would you mind introducing yourself, you and Annalise, and how long have you been in Australia for? Oh, my name's Johan. This is my wife, Annalise, and we've been in Australia for just over 10 years. Is it already 10 years? It's wow. Actually, it's, it's more than 11. Sorry, being the wife here. It's more wow, than 11. More wow. than 10. <laughs> yeah, that's the safe <laughs> answer. <laughs> Can't believe it's been so long. And obviously, I know you guys well because you're really good friends of mine since Annalise, since we were, what, five, grade six, yeah, grade six. one? Mm -hmm. So we've come a long way together. But um, please tell our viewers, how did you come to Australia? Where were you before you came to Australia and how that route uh, or that process worked for you guys? Well, uh, once Annalise and I finished our studies in South Africa, um, we had the opportunity to go to England. So our route actually went via England to end up in Australia. We uh, spent seven years in England and um, the weather <laughs> got us down, I have to say. Travel was awesome, we made amazing friends, but uh, we knew we would not be able to retire in England. Mm. And the longer we stayed in England, the more reason we saw not to go back to South Africa. And um, once we decided, no, we don't wanna go back to South Africa, we started the application process for uh, Australia. And we've been here, like we said before, just over <laughs> years. And we absolutely love it in Australia. Lovely country, nice and warm in Brisbane. And uh, yeah, it has a lot to offer. So did you consider going to Canada or the US or any of the other English speaking countries instead of coming to Australia when you decided at that stage that, you know, you still didn't want to be in South Africa, but UK was a bit too cold for you? Uh, the main reason why we came to Australia was for further studies for myself. Um, Australia offered a course that I was always interested in. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a dental technician uh, qualified in South Africa, but then Australia offered um, to the dental prosthetist course, which in South Africa, I think they call it something like um, dental technologist or adventurist. So okay. unfortunately, South Africa doesn't offer that course or at, when, that time. or at that time. I don't think they do still now. Um, but in England, the course wasn't available when we left. So that was one of the main reasons why we did choose Australia to come to. And you haven't looked back to having moved to Australia? No, no not at all. Not at all. Finished the further studies, um, started working in that career field as well. Um, the kids integrated well, and Elise loves her job. Um, so, yeah, we absolutely love Australia. So, Annalise, tell us a little bit more about what you do. Right. Well, um, I'm a, a clinical nurse um, in a private hospital here in Brisbane. Um, I work in a day infusion unit. I have the perfect job. I hope my boss will be listening soon because she knows. <laughs> Promotion. <laughs> no, um, no more shift work for me. So it's basically um, in a private hospital, we see patients on a daily basis for different infusions. And um, yeah, I just love my nursing. I also did um, obviously nursing in, in England. And um, that did was- you qualified in South Africa? Yes, I did yes. my, um, I got my degree in South Africa. And I have to say, I'm never ever going to talk badly about my experience in South Africa as, as a nurse. I love that. And I do sometimes, well, quite often really, miss that. 
but we've moved on now and I'm in a better spot career-wise and as a mum for my family, this is definitely a better place to be even in my um, job situation. So how did the kids find moving to Australia? Because they were, how old were they at that point? So um, our son Daniel was five and our daughter um, Simone was 13. It was a little bit harder for her to move here, but when she realised what she's got here, she absolutely loved it. Daniel thought he landed in heaven because as a five-year-old boy, you would know they need a lot of outside space and play. <laughs> we really couldn't offer that in England. So um, he's really, he just thought he landed in heaven. They just took, you know, took off running and they loved it. They never looked back. Um, and they, so do they speak Afrikaans still? They both speak Afrikaans still to each other, which I find very interesting. Most, most other South African families that I know, the kids end up talking English to each other, siblings, mm. except my two. They still speak Afrikaans with each other. They speak it quite well. Um, I think, well, we obviously speak it as a family at home. Uh, we do have a lot of South African friends, but once again, those kids and our kids speak English with each other. So uh, neither of them really spent much time in South Africa. So they never grew up in an Afrikaans country, or not that South, no. South Africa is Af an Afrikaans country, but you know, where the no. native Afrikaans comes from. Do you think it's as a result of you, the two of you speaking Afrikaans all the time? Did you ever switch over to English when you were like helping them with their studies or anything? No, no. I think from the uh, get go, we decided we'll keep uh, speaking Afrikaans at home because we knew with their schooling, it is going to be in English. Mm. So Afrikaans will become their second language. And it turned out that way. So they they're fluent in English and Afrikaans is their home language. And we're very happy that they are still able to speak that when they go and visit their family in South mm -hmm. Africa. Mm -hmm. So we noticed every time that we do go back for holidays, they come back and their Afrikaans has uh, just increased and got better so much after practicing it a bit with a family. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's different family, talking to I your family to and friends. Mom, I have to give my mum um, credit for that. She really, uh, persisted in keeping up their Afrikaans from her end, from the other side of the world. Keep sending Afrikaans books, um, reading to them in Afrikaans on the phone, talking to them in Afrikaans. She really, and, and just because she feels comfortable in Afrikaans. So they, especially Daniel, um, associated Afrikaans with his grandma. And it's almost like it's a heart language for him. He associates it with his cousins in South Africa. So he really decided from a very young age that he will make this language part of him. That's great. Um, mm -hmm. and not that I think Afrikaans will bring you anywhere in Australia as such, but I always see it as just the fact that you're able to think in another language, like you understand how it is to have to, two languages, makes it so much easier to learn a third language. Mm -hmm. And, and that's, that's the important thing for me about Afrikaans because yes, we speak Afrikaans too at home, as you would know, but um, I don't mind whether my children really keep Afrikaans or not as such, but I do mind them having a second language. And mm -hmm. for us, it's just easy enough to have it as Afrikaans, although that's mm -hmm. our first language, but we have English and Afrikaans. So yeah, that makes mm -hmm. it easier. Um, in terms of going back home, how often do you, and, and I say going back home, because some people refer to South Africa still as home. Do you still refer to South Africa as home or do you re refer to Australia as home? I do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so you're split across two countries for home. Yes. See, um, my, my, well, the majority of my family is still over there. Um, for me, that will always be home. It, that's a simple fact. It's something, once again, it comes from my heart. I can't make my mind decide for me. It's like when the Springboks, you know, get on the field. You can't say, hey, I'm in Australia now, you know. It, it's something that comes from the heart. You just... I don't have any choice over that matter. 
And you, Johans, uh, England or South Africa or Aussie? Uh, <laughs> no, I think um, it's between South Africa and Australia, definitely. But for me, home is where I go every day after work. <laughs> so that's easy. True, I drive it doesn't home, matter which country. My wife's at home, the kids are at home. So <laughs> this is our home. <laughs> and how often do you go back to South Africa? Um, Shamini, I try to go every year. It doesn't always work out that way. Um, I was meant to go in May, but clearly COVID had a, another um, agenda for me. Yuan basically comes with me every second year. But um, up until now, you know, at least Daniel went with us or with me. But, um, you know, he's now in year 11. He's taking his own, you know, course. And he's been to South Africa, funny enough, twice on his own without us already. Wow. Back for visits. So we do have a strong connection with our family there still. So yeah, I try to go back regularly. Do they come to visit you often? Yes, um, those who can. Um, when we lived in England, my mum physically was still able to. So she visited us a lot in England and she loved it, by the way. She hasn't been able to come to Australia. Um, your aunts, um, uncle and his sister my sisters have been i'm now very blessed to say that one of my um, nephews live with us in uh, brisbane at the moment he's here on a student visa Good. and also um, a niece of mine and her husband and their two little kids now live in sydney so slowly but surely they're coming over and I'm sure that you're hoping that there will be a bit more family coming over. Okay. Oh, look, I work with a plan. <laughs> Especially, the younger generation. Especially the younger generation. Yeah. yeah, the ones just finishing uni or busy studying, they definitely have their sights <clears throat> set in moving overseas. Um, and I think Annalise and I being one of the first from our families <clears throat> taking the plunge, and uh, moving over overseas, it definitely opened their eyes to those opportunities. Mm. And um, I hope the influence we had on them um, has paid off. Oh, yes. I purposely <laughs> had them over on holidays at specific vulnerable times in their lives. To influence them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they're very happy about that. <laughs> yeah. Now, tell me, Yuan and Annalise, when you applied for your visas to come to Australia, what was that category that you came under? Like, was it a general skilled migration or did you come with or, or, you know, permanent residence or was it just a work visa? What was that? So we applied um, on our own. We didn't use an immigration agent purely because of financial reasons. And I thought it's just a long application form. You tick all the boxes. It was fairly straightforward. You do have to spend a lot of time on the immigration website to put all the pieces together. Mm. But once you get the hang of it, it's not too difficult to do it on your own. Um, and we came over with permanent residency because we immigrated to England first and went the route of having uh, just a work visa initially. We saw the benefit of having permanent residency when you move to a country. It just allows you more freedom to work or to, to move between jobs because you're not tied to one specific employer. Yeah. Um, so when we came, yeah, we had permanent residency and it made everything so much easier for us. And how long did the process take from applying until you got to Australia? I think it, the whole process took about two and a half years from actual, actually starting the application form to putting our feet on Australian soil. Um, and that's with a bit of delay in regards to planning everything, um, getting your ship shipping all your belongings over and booking flights so it took about two and a half years yeah yeah and it's interesting because you've got the perspective of having lived in the uk as well how would you say does the australian work culture compare to the uk world culture work culture look i think it's um definitely much better here um definitely more family friendly good I do feel as a mum, as a family, you know, there's just so much support overall. Um, it's a little bit more of a laid back culture in some areas, which isn't a bad thing. It's really a good thing. Um, so yeah, I, personally as a nurse, um, it's just the best country to work in. And compared to South Africa? 
on a different level, look, the excitement, the type of work that you do in South Africa as a nurse, I don't think you'll get it anywhere else in the world. Uh, but as I said earlier, it's a much safer environment. Um, I feel much more appreciated as a nurse here. Uh, and it's definitely better paid. That helps. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> and Johan, in your industry, you see uh, patients. Yes, I do see patients. And like I said, I changed my, uh, my career path after coming to Australia. So if we compare apples with apples, the dental technician side of things, it's very similar to the British way of doing things. And I would say uh, working in South Africa as well, it's very similar. Um, it's just a different, you just have to get used to the new country's way of doing things in the, in the workplace. Hmm. A lot so of red tape in Australia? Yes. Yeah, a few things, few boxes that you have to tick, a um, few rules and regu regulations that you have to comply with. But once you get all of those things under the belt, then it's just business as usual. What was the hardest thing for you guys of applying for your visa? Um, I think the hardest thing was just uh, getting your qualification transferred over to the Australian one. Mm -hmm. For Annalisa, for her being a nurse, it was more straightforward than for myself. At that time. At that Things stage. have changed a little yeah. bit now. Mm -hmm. So it's just, again, looking everything up on the Australian website, finding where you need to make sure that you do transfer your qualification over to the Australian equivalent. Mm -hmm. And that takes a bit of, yeah. a pro that's a, a, a big step as well. So for, in my own industry, I had to sit an uh, exam, an entry exam, or to make sure that I am on the same level as a dental technician as the Australians. Did you have to do that for the UK as well? No, funny enough, it wasn't required in the UK. They accepted my, my South African qualification. Mm. But coming to Australia, they, they wanted to make sure that I'm on par with the guys here. Interesting. Mm. What's, your, what's the best thing about Australia for you? What do you love the most? All the people. <laughs> I love Australians. I do. Look, I think... When we first came here to activate our visa, we were on a little holiday and it was in the middle of winter and I had a four-year-old who was jet-lagged and unhappy most of the time. But the helpfulness and the friendliness of the Australians just got us, you know. The moment you stand around and look maybe a little bit confused, someone jumps, you know, and help you. And then another time when we, when we knew we made the right decision, Shamni, was during the 2010 floods. Mm. I could not believe how communities can get together and help out in times of need. Mm. It was the most amazing thing for me to experience how strangers just started helping strangers. No questions wow. asked. And I saw that time and again. And as recently as the bushfires we all had, it's just absolutely amazing. That's what I love most about Australia. Well, for me, Annalise is obviously a people's person. <laughs> <laughs> I love I the outdoors. That. <laughs> <laughs> the outdoor Australia is amazing. Uh, where we live in Brisbane, we are surrounded by a couple of islands that we love to explore. We enjoy camping. Um, driving on the beaches are allowed here, so mm -hmm. which is amazing. And... Uh, Places like Fraser Island, Morton Island. There's a beach called, I think, 75 Mile Beach. You're not allowed to advertise. Oh, it might be 73 Mile Beach, <laughs> but it's a long beach. You, you drive on it, it's amazing. We just love the Australian yeah. bush. We do miss all the South African animals, so I have mm. to say the bush yes. feels a bit empty mm. compared to South Africa. But, <laughs> but a bit safer. To, say again. But a bit safer. It is definitely safer. No, no lions or leopards stalking up behind you. Um, but yeah, we absolutely love the Australian bush once you, get to, once you get used to it. And what's the worst thing for you about Australia? What annoys you? How far we are away from anything and everyone else. Look, it's, it, it costs a fortune to fly anywhere in the world if you're flying from Australia. It costs a fortune to yeah. ship anything to Australia. 
That's basically. It's called down under for a reason. <laughs> <laughs> it's on the bottom yes. side of the earth. It's far away from him anywhere. <laughs> it is. It is quite a bit of a drive, especially if you're even thinking just to go from Perth to Brisbane. Mm. He's, he feels yes, like exactly. it's the other side of the world. Mm. It's a what five and a half hour flight from mm -hmm. Perth to Brisbane. I think that's one of the things I didn't realize until I really moved to Australia was the sheer distances between things. You think in South Africa, oh, it's so far to drive from Joburg to Cape Town. You think, oh, yeah, I'm going to drive the whole day. Well, try being in Australia. <laughs> You'll <laughs> drive the whole two week. weeks to drive from Brisbane to Perth or from Perth to Brisbane. So, yeah, no, it's a, it's a big place, this. So, um, if you go back to South Africa or when you go back to South Africa, what are the things that you like to bring with you to Australia? If anything, is it like, like, do you keep like little souvenirs or bring stuff back with you? Now this is going to sound terrible, but after 18 years, there's really nothing that we bring over. Like, obviously except gifts from the family, but yeah. I have, I have now learned to adapt to everything here. I use, everything Australian. Um, I don't really get anything specifically from South Africa. And yeah. So what do you miss the most then? Oh, my family. Still comes down to family. There's really nothing South African that I miss that I can't get here. We get our Bultum, we get our Druvor, you get Mrs. Bulls and you know. Yeah. Other than that, there's really absolutely nothing what did you want to say, Johan? Yeah. Mm, yeah, no, I like buying T-shirts and um, things like that in South Africa. I don't mind the odd thing that I can wear to remind me where I've been on holiday, so I don't mind that. And, um, yes, we do find all those typical South African things like tennis biscuits and uh, mm. Omar rusks and things like that. We do find them here. So, yeah, we, we're happy. <laughs> You're settled. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Now, for our viewers who might be considering moving to Australia, what would you say to the South Africans that are thinking, oh, should I, shouldn't I? What would be your advice to them? Do you want to say something? Do it as soon as you can. That's what I would say. Start the application process. Take the plunge. Um, one of my nephews, he, um, I talked to him for such a long time and he was undecided and then he actually moved to New Zealand last year and he absolutely loved it. He loves it and he said, I wish I had done it a long time before. Mm. I should have listened to you mm -hmm. and done it earlier. Yeah, it's a matter of doing your homework properly, but do it. Quite often in life, it's not the things that we do that we regret. It's the things that we don't do that we end up regretting. Yes, true. And I'm sure that you've seen that with, I'm, I'm assuming on it is with a lot of your patients when you work in oncology or you used to work in oncology yes, for a while yes, as well. Right, yes. Did you, did you find that some of those patients said that to you that, you know, if you, if they reflect back on their lives, what are the things that they're regretting? Mm -hmm. Definitely. And if you, and if you sit and talk to any any person, you know, a little bit older than us, it, it really comes down to regretting the things that you didn't do. So I'd say take the plunge, do your homework and take the plunge. Good. How did you settle in with friends and making friends and finding your feet in Brisbane? Hmm. See, um, if you have kids, it's a bit easier because you take your kid to school, you start talking to the mum next to you, your kid wants to go and have a play date with this person. So one way is definitely integrating with your child into their school and school environment. And then like anything else in life, you know, join a, join a church um, if you're religious or join a community group. Um, sports club. Sport, sport look, yeah, yeah. that's a big one. Yeah. Um, Talk to the person behind you in the aisle when you do grocery shopping. Talk, you know, that's, that's how, ask questions. That's how you do it. Talk to your neighbours. That's the other thing I love about Australia. All our neighbours, we're all very neighbourly. You know, you know your neighbours. That's just yeah. how it is. So, but join a sports club, join a church, join a community group, get out there. And 
the other bit of advice I'd give quite often I um, hear about especially women um, who struggle to integrate in a new country Australia or England and that's quite often because they are stay-at-home mums which are you know it's it's fine but if you can go out and even if you can volunteer mm. just get out and get to know the people or work if you can even if it's just part-time yeah that's I, I agree with you i see that people sit at home and think that the world australia is going to know that they've just moved to to australia and somebody's going to knock on your door and say hey come out and welcome it's like no people don't know that you're here you need to go out and tell mm. them hi i'm new you know what's your name can you be my friend and, and John, is, you wanted to say yeah no I, I just could do one more thing and um, this is also the country of volunteers go out and volunteer do something for someone mm. Yes, and the Aussies, they love their sport as much as South Africans. They mm. love their cricket. They love mm. their rugby. So as soon as you start talking rugby with them, they know who the Springboks are. They know who the All Blacks are. They don't like the All Blacks either. <laughs> and um, <laughs> it's just a nice connection point. So they're very similar in culture yeah. in that regard to South African way of life. And, and you, you, um, yeah, you just enjoy settling in and making friends with the Aussies. Yeah, it's a good it's a good point yeah, just yeah. start talking rugby to anybody and, yeah. and soon enough you might not agree on the same team but oh. you'll definitely not run short of conversation oh, that's it <laughs> and do you guys uh, support the wallabies the the roses what are they called the the english the rose yeah roses team or the springboks springboks both of you yeah i do I uh, Springboks always comes first, then I would say Australia, and any, <laughs> any team who beats uh, New Zealand, the All Blacks, <laughs> I'll support them as well. Oh, it's funny. Thank you guys, I really enjoy your time. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. It's great to hear a perspective of somebody who's spent some time in another country like the UK before they came to Australia, because most of the time what we see is people move from South Africa to Australia. But there are actually a number of people like yourselves who've moved to the UK or sometimes Canada as well. Mm -hmm. And then after a number of years they've spent there, they end up coming to Australia. And usually it's because of the weather, not because of the yeah. countries being bad at all. It's usually the weather that drives them. And what I hear more than often is that people say, once they've come to Australia, it feels more like home uh -huh. to them yeah so it was been really just lovely to see your smiley faces on the other side of the screen Thanks for having thank us, you, Germany. Germany. it's my pleasure guys and i hope to speak to you guys soon and then we'll catch up to see how um how how you've basically progressed from this chat that we've had now maybe in five years we'll do it again lovely Sounds looking good. forward to it <laughs> take care guys sleep tight thank bye. you bye, bye.